In a nation with 4,000 plus breweries all vying for shelf space and the money of thirsty drinkers like yourself, great artwork and a clever pun on the label can help a fledgling brewery stand out. However, these brewers may have taken their cleverness a step too far and designed a label that became more controversial than successful. Today, we'll be looking at five of the most controversial beer labels in brewing history. Hello, beer nerds. Welcome to Beer by the Numbers, the show where we examine the facts and figures surrounding the most liberal libation in the world, beer. In today's episode, we'll be taking a break from hard numbers and we'll instead look at five of the most controversial beer labels ever to grace the bottle of the world's greatest beverage. Without any further ado, let's get started. It's no secret that beer companies use sex to sell beer. After all, drinking that Bud Light Lime will certainly give you that sexy beach body of your dreams. But sometimes the implications can be a little too obvious, as the founders of Chicago's Sweetwater Brewing found out with their happy ending Imperial Stout. Their labels for this brew featured images of geisha girls or a box of tissues, and a description of the beer heavily implied much more than the explosion of flavor contained within the bottle. Brewers don't always have the most polished vocabulary, and of course they've been known to use some curse words in their beer names, but this next one may have gone a bit too far. The Michigan Liquor Control Commission banned Flying Dogs Brewery Raging Bitch IPA. In the commission's opinion, the name and accompanying label was harmful to any adult who might read the beer's name on a restaurant menu. Fortunately, their decision was reversed in July of 2011, when drinkers across the Great Lakes state were treated to this artsy and over-the-top label. Yes, those are exposed dog teats and genitals, and the dog is, in fact, walking through a field of even more teats. This beer is still brewed today, so you can still make a pilgrimage to Michigan to suckle at the teat of the Raging Bitch IPA. IPAs have enjoyed a surge in popularity in recent years, but while the beer style has rebounded, there seemed to be a major shortage of India puns on the labels themselves, and maybe that was for a good reason. Popular on beer trade forums, GandhiBot IPA pays homage to an inspiring leader. Ironically, Gandhi spoke out against the evils of alcohol many times, which makes it kind of weird that they decided to name an IPA after him. Five years after it was first made available, word of the beer finally made its way to India, and after several threats of a lawsuit, the name of the brew was changed to GBot, but the imagery has remained to this day. Normally, a beer named after a college football coach is a true honor worthy of a legendary campus hero. However, if that hero is Joe Paterno, it can certainly sweep up some controversy. In 2012, the long-standing statue of Joe Paterno was removed from outside Beaver Stadium in the wake of the Jerry Sandusky incident. Many thought it would help the community move on, but some still want to publicly remember Joe Paterno. Brewers at DeKesney Brewery wanted to honor Paterno with a legacy beer line. However, the beer sparked a social media firestorm. I guess some things are just really difficult to move on from. Our final label is probably the most offensive one I came across, and combines several of the aspects of the other labels we've been talking about here. Beer Here's Malice Pater. This label pulls no punches, showing an implied sexual act between a beer-swigging priest and a young boy. And what's up with that priest's hand? Is that... Yes, it's the shocker. In the midst of a seemingly unending stream of news relating to the abuse of children at the hands of Catholic priests, this beer label drew criticism from around the world, all aimed at beer here brewing in Denmark. Being able to bring uneasy feelings to 1.2 billion Catholics worldwide makes this probably one of the most controversial beer labels ever. If you enjoyed the controversy provided in this video and think it deserves some kudos, give it a thumbs up below. And if you want to be notified each time we tap a fresh episode of Beer by the Numbers, hit that subscribe button. 
Also, check out our Twitter page. There you'll get a new and interesting fact about beer each and every day. Finally, let us know what you think of this series by leaving us a comment somewhere on the internet. Stay curious, beer nerds, and as Benjamin Franklin once said, there can't be good living where there is not good drinking.